the super respect bands, and they're going to do it. Bowie, I want okay. I want a front oh, row okay. seat to this boxing match. Bowie versus D Flash here. Um, <laughs> it's better, guys. I, I respect D Flash a lot, okay? But uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but I would kick his ass in the boxing ring. I'm just <laughs> oh, all right. Wow, Jakiro, different stuff. Different stuff. Okay. I like this. No that, bat rider straight up. Yeah. yeah. It's also a very good answer to that exact problem you were just discussing. Of oh, like, the uh, yeah, I mean, the tree ants as well as just like being swarmed early. Jakiro is actually pretty good in those situations with like some of your early slows and uh, spell damage plus the fact you're relatively tanky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like this hero is, is a little bit undervalued. Uh, I, I definitely feel like he's really strong in lane. He not only offers push, but he offers a lot of deep push too. I think he, he's really good versus Nature's Prophet in general. But there we go. The card we mentioned but didn't show up in that game. Yep. Classic for Hokori. That is but a strong isn't, hero. Isn't Jakiro... I, I know on paper the hero should be good, but isn't mm -hmm. he one of the ones that we've seen just a handful of times and every time it's looked pretty rough? Like we have that same conversation of, man, if Jakiro feeds first blood, I don't really know what the hero does. <laughs> um, am I nuts? Am I misremembering here? Um... Uh, I think, like, he, you know, when, when you see Jakiro, he might not have a great game, but he is an auto ban. He's kind of like a Nyx uh, to a lesser degree, where, like, you don't really want to pick Beastmaster, you don't really want to pick Nature's Prophet just because that attack speed is low, just because he has so much uh, AoE. Uh, I think he holds towers really well, so in general, it's hard to just. Um, to just, like, force towers if you're against a Jakiro, you know? Yeah. You can, defend True. a lot but with just by being a position five that's a good I think point it's fairly strong versus any tusk plus one lane too because like you know they're mm -hmm. gonna clump uh and then you're gonna hit them yeah. with both your spells and the turnaround potential is generally pretty high and it's uh doubled up whenever you have any sort of a control element from your carry and in this case they will have the sun from the wraith kings so there is kill potential on whoever hokori puts up here if they are uh, uh you know a little too greedy in the lane 10 seconds remaining I like the timber pick. Uh, I feel like you really got to think about the Five combos here for Uh You know, even though we usually see Tusk as a four, depending on the offline here, there's definitely a lot of uh, pressure to put the Kotto as four and combo him. So I like the timber ban. Slarky. Huh. Pretty Do okay against Wraith back? King. Haven't seen it as a counter pick too much, but on paper, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be really good in that game against the Abaddon, but they had already picked the Monkey King. I'm a little surprised crewmates didn't go for the bat instead of the Wraith King. thought that was kind of surprising. Ten seconds remaining. Um, yeah. Five Maybe they're... Remaining. I mean, I guess Abaddon's still up. Like, pretty much what they did, what, what they did against that bat rider, they could Not do again, pick. right? Uh, it's true. So maybe they want to give Analog a better matchup here. I think he <laughs> and they also a just demoralized after game one. Bam Beast, which I also thought was pretty good uh, for them. I mean, I guess Coddle's like kind of okay if you run a five. Not really. Like without Blinding Light now. and the... I feel like I'm you shouldn't get caught by the blast. After getting the Rave King and Benning Beastmaster, what are you really afraid of Ten when you get this tide? Remaining. Like, I, I'm not sure what remaining. you think, Trent. Do, do you think... Tide Hunter is good uh, by itself, or is it strong because, you know, he counters Terror Blade, Beastmaster, Wraith King, because, like, both uh, of those heroes are already banned or picked. Both. It's also very strong with Jakiro. Uh, you actually see this combo picked a lot together because Jakiro has really good follow-up to, like, any big uh, AoE stuff. And uh, Tide's okay. also, like, a nice combo breaker, so if you're just getting, like, messed around by, like, Coddle yeah. plus the ulti and stuff, so... I think there's also this general sentiment that the Coddle's going to want to be like shoving a couple lanes on the side and Ty can just get planted in front of the tower. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I know combo. for sure Ty's definitely best as a counter pick in a lot of situations, but some people just like really like the hero, I think. I always think of him in that that um, combo breaker kind of scenario. Kraken Shell is so unique when bundled with Ravage, where he can actually just YOLO into a fight and spam his ult and get it off, right? That's so unique for an off laner. Sometimes you need somebody that can absorb his, all that um, damage and still break it up. His actual Kraken Shell counters are all very bad right now, too. They're not considered, like, good heroes, like Disruptor and uh, and Doom. And even, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you right, could say, right. like, Viper, yeah. maybe you're going to get him stuck in the, the break. is probably one of the better meta heroes right now, but that's not really reliable in a lot of ways. Yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. a great point. 
So they're really, yeah, they're going to give analog last pick here. There's, I don't think there's a lot of incentive to pick his right. right now. You ready for this? What Snapfire. Oh, so I, my no. theory is that Snapfire yeah. Tide's actually probably pretty good right now because of the, uh, ever since Snap got the minus armor and Tide got like mm. the physical damage. And then, I mean, I guess just because the Will O Wisp is in the eggs now, it's not as important, but I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Snap 4 and Tide 3 is actually like kind of legit. Plus, they already I had some of the snap combo. over this Skyrim Mage for sure. I agree, Snap's a bit of a sleeper. Sky is very good versus uh, Underlord, I think, though, just because like you need the, the damage amp and all that magic. Like, you can actually cut through an Underlord with Skyrim Mage plus one. Like, pretty much any mid, and that Underlord can die. Wait, can't so. you just adapt your build, though, and just get an early hood? I don't, I mean, I think Sky's Wait. just like an overwhelming amount of damage that that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily save you. Uh, Especially like in the middle of a ravage or something, like he will die. You know what I mean? Yeah, they I, can combo him down, but I'm I'm worried for the Skyrath. I feel like you're presenting it like it's really easy for the Sky, and I I don't know, man. Yeah, I honestly like it, it didn't really do that much in lane, and I don't think Tidehunter is a hero that uh, potentializes it. what the Skyrath Mage brings in the lane at least. Potentializes? That's a dank word. I like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So, Potentializes, realizes the potential. I love it, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I we'll see if it, if it's good. They're definitely confident because they're picking it again, even yeah. even after the the last draft. That's the only hero they repeated. Yeah, not my favorite hero. I will also say that, but I don't know. The spammers seem pretty good at it. Obviously, it didn't work out last. That's game, true. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, oh, there we go. Speaking of the coddle combos. Oh, so, so okay. yeah, coddle combo. And now here's the drawback when you're showing this Skywrath Jakiro. Who's your go to support against this bristleback type hero? It's Witch Doctor. You're Maledict, right? Cuts right through. Same with the Underlord. So, yeah, you've got this damage from the Skywrath, but I mean, you got three really beefy boys and you only got one ultimate trip. It's true. Well, you know, tell you that. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. They need to start getting some hero. wagers on Ag's timing for Skywrath this game. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but uh, do we like this bristleback though? I imagine this is, is this a one bristle safe lane bristle. I think so. Yes, one bristle with the coddle support. The class. I honestly, I think one bristle is better than people think it is. Like your knee jerk reaction is, oh, how's he gonna scale? But dude, warpath with coddle and items, bristle shreds. And a coddle, it, yeah. it makes so much difference actually. I mean, do you bother uh, banning why, wait, Viper why, here? Why are they banning DP? Oh, damn. I mean, I thought they were going to try and leave in the DP and just take it. Oh, guys, come on. You had it. <laughs> DP actually would have been so legit for them. I and then like the crewmates would have been like, oh, hero. DP. Yeah. On crewmates. All right, legit but heroes here. Earth Spirit mid. Uh, Ember mid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Ember is... Like Ember is good for the early pace, but Underlord and Bristleback are gonna be so hard to kill. You don't have damage. No, no, I mean Ember for uh, Hokori. It's like oh. kind of scary in the sky though, but Spirit yeah, I think it's Heroes. Good. I think if you're if you're ahead, you just eat the Sky Riff alive. Yeah. You can chain so, from much further away than he can silence. Uh, why is Viper still in? Um uh, is it like, I am I dumb here? Are crewmates just not gonna pick Viper? Why don't they just point. take that? Radiant it's it's good in I think theory. they're definitely gonna take Viper. They just banned Lena too. I Unless they're know, taking Viper. Hokori, oh, big brain. I mean that that would that would make sense for the conundrum that I'm stuck on right now. But I mean I think, I think Viper they like is Bush the, if they go Viper. It's the one hero though that can crypt like exactly. Bristle One. I, I agree with you if it's Bristle Three, but Bristle One. You, you just have to slow him down a little. Viper is just so good. The break is so hard for Bristle to play around. <laughs> I think they actually are about to pick Bristle. I mean, pick Viper. I think they saw uh, that Lena ban and something their head clicked and were like, like oh, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be very bad. I, I mean, overall, I think they could just like cut it out. No. I like this much more than okay, the Viper. Okay, so Bo is right. So they're push. thinking about the Viper and they go, you know what? If they pick Viper, we're just going to run this shit down. We're knocking down towers. Huh. Maybe they were afraid of the Skyrim Mage being played as a mid? I I don't I know. I mean, he's not uh, now, that's for sure. That's, uh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's the Nether Wards um, down. Skyrim's game is over. Ooh, and, and Bristleback and Underlord with the heel of Pugna. How are they going to kill those heroes? I, I feel like Hokori won with the draft already. 
This is a great like, draft. They don't right? have a gap closer on the Pagna. He's going to be free to heal anyone whenever he wants. Yeah. And Cottle might get eggs eventually. And, and uh, like, or the shard and he went. I'm telling you, okay. don't underestimate how fast Bristol can play in the position one with a Coddle support. Like he comes online at like five minutes. It's stupid. Alongside a Pugna, you could be 15 minute death ball and just knocking this game down. I I don't think there's a hero in Dota 2 that wins this draft. Damn. You need a vessel hero, you need to crush Pugna. You have no push. Uh, hey, hey, Wraith King has skeletons. Jakiro's got liquid fire. They've got a little bit of push. Yeah. <laughs> a wee bit of push. <laughs> They've got a. I guess they have to Viper, but it, it it's going to feel bad, and it's not an analog hero. They got a Trenchito amount of uh, push. They could Jeez. try and, like, drag it out a little bit. I mean, like, mm, Puck's still there. It's, like, kind of ugly, but... Dude, just, just pick Alchemist. Just pick Medusa. All right. All right. Kunkka's similar flavor to that Puck. Something that can delay a little bit. More of an analog hero, at least. Yeah. But, um... I don't know. Based on how Hokori played in game one and the speed at which they can play this draft, Lumiere looked great on that ABBA last game. I think he's going to look good on Bristle again. Uh, I think this is 2 old boys. I don't want this to be a set own, so I, I will send all of my power <laughs> to crewmates here. But this draft looks tough. Uh, it just looks really good. What's the we'll win condition, what Trent? Uh, I mean, Kunkka just has... have to outplay, just have to outskill here. It's got single target initiation, and they don't actually have any way to save you. Like, if the if you get X, you can theoretically just die, right? To Skywrath spells, yeah. long range ice path, like. Uh, so, I mean, it, there's p potential. I think it's very scary because there's no cooldowns. Uh, that, that's really the thing that frightens me, is that if Ravage is down, these poor guys, man, yeah, like, yeah. they're just going to run at them, and it's going to be very depressing. And their cooldowns that they do have will just be getting loaded by uh, by Gardic. So uh, combined with the skill difference in game one that Hokori were showing, they, they look very strong coming into this game. So uh, crewmates, they, they got to clean up the lanes, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, let's see if they can do it. Bowie, I just got confirmation that potentialize is a real word, and I didn't even know that. So thank you for educating ha. me, buddy. We got to mix that <laughs> one into these broadcasts a little more often. Look at that <laughs> vocabulary with Bowie here in the lower division. Folks, let's hand it over to our casters. We've got Gary. We've got 1437. I'm excited to hear their thoughts about this position one bristleback. Gary, are we excited? Are we lukewarm? How are we feeling over there? Are you ready to see some quill spray, buddy? Yeah, I'm excited to potentialize this game. Let's get into things. Hokori up against Crewmates. Game two of this best of three. Theban, we've got a pause one. Bristleback. Yep. Man, yep. it's going to be super exciting. It is. Uh, I, I, want, I want to make a few points about this uh, draft, actually. I really think Crewmates had it in the bag if they actually picked Viper. I really do. I, I, look, I look at the draft of Hokori. Like, there are two cores... Their position one and three get countered by Viper. And Pugna loses the mid matchup against Viper as well. Pugna can't really do much. They need something that can anchor their team, essentially, in this game. And they end up going with the Kunkka. I think Kunkka is decent, but still really hard to play into the Bristleback. Hard to play into the Underlord. You know, you got that Firestorm, your Strength Hero. You're going to get burned down. And this Pugna is going to just have such a great time until this uh, X-Mark Bolt combo comes up. I mean, who's better to anchor your team than the sea captain himself? Come on. Come yeah, on, Steven. But, you know, then you got the Kunkka and the Tidehunter together, and they're, like, True. always butting heads. So it's uh, really hard to make both of them work together. You and I do want to say, like, in terms of uh, so the, the panel is talking about, like, some tower push problems on the side of Hakori, but they do have Jakiro, right? They just need to have something that can allow them to win the fights and not let the opponents constantly run into you, and then Jakiro will do all the work for you. Yeah, have you seen much Shakira recently? It, it feels like a, no, a hero that's not been popular the past year it's or so. Not. Like the last yeah, time the I, problem... I remember seeing mm -hmm. it was FNG playing it like six months ago and he maxed out Liquid oh. Fire <laughs> and he was pushing towers no, with he... it. <laughs> no, no, he still plays it. <laughs> FNG is the one guy who still plays it <laughs> uh, with the Liquid Fire. Uh, Alliance yeah. played it not too long ago. I think it must have been like last week. Oh, okay. Um, they, they were doing that, but... I don't think Jakiro is that good of a hero ever since uh, the they removed the experience talents on level 10 mm. for Jakiro, right? Every, that, that was a time where they removed all the XP talents, right? But Jakiro was a hero was good when they had the XP talents so he can get to those higher levels and get to that uh, talent 
in the game and scale into a strong late game hero. There was also the patch where they reduced all the talents by 25%, which also hurt him quite a bit. Yeah, it was pretty disastrous for him. Our crewmates right now, all up together in their triangle, waiting for any of these sneaky smoke moves. That could upset that early laning stage. But Hokori doing pretty much the same thing over at their triangle. So mirrored across the map. Bristleback is currently deforesting down south. He's cutting a lot of trees. Did you have an explanation? Is he just bored or is he just this... chilling? Yeah, he's bored. He's he's <laughs> antsy to just go out there and crush the crewmates. So he's just like chilling. You know, it kind of makes sense now why they pick Kunkka and they pick Tide Hunter. Is. Their team name is Crewmates. Oh yeah. <laughs> it all comes together, doesn't it? My yeah, it all comes together. And Kunkka. Yeah. How do we not know they're gonna pick Kunkka? <laughs> Look at him. Look at his badass set too. It's like Slardar. Look he at Kunkka's set. Yeah, he's got an actual Slardar head. I wonder if that's a mask he's made. You know, he's killed Slardar. You know, like mm. those uh, safari hunters, instead of mounting on a wall, oh he's turned God. it into a mask. Yeah, the back side is creepy as hell, though. It's like yeah. a brain. Oh my <laughs> God. That's some real nasty stuff. Yeah. Well, Mr. Hannibal Lecter playing Kunkka over there. We'll uh, look away from him. Probably not going to have a good time against the Pugna. I'll look into the other lanes, because down bottom, we've got three dire heroes. D Flash, Calfs, Jakiro, and that Skyrath still lurking around with the Tide Hunter of Hijack. I, I guess they want to think about getting in on top of Gardic here. They're chasing forward as the Radiant. Now out comes the Dual Breath, but the Illuminate forces Hijack back. And D Flash, he's just got to TP top. Wraith King needs his, needs his assistance. I'll set up into their normal dual lanes. So Vitaly and Elmi show the Tuscan Underlord up there. We'll finally have yeah, two no. enemy heroes. Just wanted to apply a little pressure bottom before he went top, but it always feels bad as a Jack hero to like use dual breath somewhere else, then TP as well. You just spent like over 200 mana before you even got to your lane. He uses one more dual breath and he's already going to have to get out and clarity up. <laughs> he's got triple mangoes on him as well, so yeah. he should be able to sustain. So, definitely. I played a lot of Jack hero in my time. And uh, one thing I learned is it's a really bad hero against teams who play fast. It's very difficult because this hero just needs so many levels, right? You need to max out your liquid fire, you need to max out your ice path, you still need like two points of dual breath for the laning stage. And he's also like one of the slug heroes. Like he's got wings, you can flap them, but he's so slow with 290 move speed. It takes a lot yeah, of damage yeah. there from El Misho and Vitali, but like reacting to things as, as a Jakiro, you like, you need to TP. Yeah, he's like a penguin. Can't fly. You don't have the Just like flaps around. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Yeah. Slow and sad. Well, we can peer into the mid lane. Near currently at 10 and 1. Kunka having a good start to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lane isn't that bad. Uh, the problem is like, what do you do later? Um, you can X mark the Pugna when he goes for the blast and stuff, and you have some decent amount of catch. It's just not on the same level as Viper, who who will counter not only the Pugna, but also the Bristleback and the Underlord. Mm. And then have an actual good laning stage instead of kind of trading even. Yeah. They might have been thinking about the X mark against the Dark Rift, though, which is kind of decent. Yeah, that's a nice little Bring counter. Bring a hero back. Get that plus one kill. Or any kill through that Dark Rift. A lot of pressure Ray top. FCR dropping low. Yeah, it's been back and forth. Every time I look top, they're chasing the Tusk, yeah. or Tusk is chasing them. This is what Underlord does. He just constantly chips away at your opponent and pushes the lane out, allowing your support to make pulls happen. Right here, he's going to pull for himself. And the enemy just feels a lot of pressure. They need a lot of region. Look at this Jakiro. He's, he's naked. He's bringing out more tangles and oh, more and more mango top. Oh, wow. Wait. Lumiere, first blood, and they've slowed down Hijack's Tide. Can they get the kill here with all the goose stacks? It's a lot of minus armor. Hijack turns with the gush and the anchor smash, but the quill sprays, they're stacking up. A tremendous little go there from Hokori, getting both kills in that bottom lane. Yeah, Sky got too close. I mean, this guy has zero armor, right? Or he's got one armor now with the stats, but if you get gooed up, you will just die. 
Yeah, one two zero build anyway. on this bristle. No need for bristle back. You're going all aggressive. Such a great combo. Bristle back caught up. It's pretty disgusting, isn't it, with the chakra magic? Yeah, I mean, ever since they made Chakra Magic give cooldown reduction, people have been playing this Bristleback Cottle for some time now. Uh, gonna kill the Cottle here, though. Arcane okay, Bolt comes sky. in. Oh, he's not committing to the Sky right here. Kind of surprised about that. That looked like a pretty free kill, but maybe he's like, okay, I don't want to lose too much HP. Yeah, I'll just wait for my Cottle to come back. He's got his Ring of Health, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, Cottle combos. I mean, we, we saw the oh, top lane D flash under the shards. He's okay, close enough to that Turbon Tower to run away and actually turn with the Wraith King. Vitali down to 100 HP, trying to bottle between hits. And he will be able to. Oh, oh maybe not. El Misho. He doesn't get the trade. FCR's out of there. Huge. That is so huge. Nice. They needed, us. They needed something like that. Ah, I thought the Tusk would get the kill there. Those bottle uses in between hits from the Underlord are real nice. Down bottom again. Skyrath Mage getting chased by the Bristleback. And he's already popped his wand, so there's no escape from that quill damage. As Hijack herded back to his tier 1 tower too. Mm -hmm. We've seen plenty of these Cottle combos, right? Like the... Top the lane. Oh, are they going in again? The shards on that Wraith King? Yep. Still not dead though. Finally falls under the Firestorm. And D-Flash, he stuck around to kill off the Tusk, but a double kill for Vitali. Yep, five to Didn't, three. Uh, back off, or Jakir was not able to get a healing salve out fast enough to get that Wraith King healed back up before the Underlord return. All right, here it is, the mid lane. We got a Kunkka with the boat up now. It's gonna get a little bit scary if uh, there's a rotation from the Skyrath Mage mid. I want to see the sky rotate mid. Like, Kunkka has bow. You need to get some kind of momentum going here. Yeah, and Tusk has rotated in. Is that ward? Oh, that ward is in? Okay. I thought they'd not seen it, but there's the there X-Boat coming off to Pugna. He decreps himself, but they've got the Ice Path what? to hold him in place. El Misho shards, blocks out the Kunkka, so near, he's still up. The rain drops, not enough to keep him alive. Didn't get his life drain off oh, either. No. Didn't have mana for it. That was not the play. He needed to decrepify the uh, Kunkka. <laughs> he said he took more damage on that bold torrent combo. Decrepified himself. Yeah, a little bit odd. Slight misplay. Tusk's going to be pretty happy leeching experience mid for the meanwhile, though. And they did get that D ward going. And Pugna can just come back in. Is that his bottle? Yeah. He'd given it to the Tusk. What's Jakira up to right now? Stacking camps. D Flash starting to build up a bit of a bank there, and Tusk, oh, he's scanning. He knows that someone was around there. He'll scout out some of the stacks. Gets a good ward over the Kunkka, too. Oh, did he see him get hit with that Tidebringer? Don't think so. Okay. It's going to be some nice juicy XP here for Kunkka. Oh, delicious. Man, that always feels nice. You got like a double or triple stack and you're like tie-bringering two different camps at the same time. So satisfying to watch. But then the enemy Tusk is stealing some XP as well. Oh, Misho super happy about that. They couldn't really contest it. Pugna's coming in now. What is it? 60% on HP on the, on the Kunkka. He's got Boat. He's got Torrent. Very hard. They're still trying. Shards block him away from the tower. Yeah, they realize it's not worth it. TP comes in from the Skyrath Mage as well. They have forced rotations here. And Cottle grabs that Invis rune. Invis. No refill for Kunkka. And then you leave your two side lanes, you know, these tanky strength cores, the Bristle and the Underlord, both pretty self sustaining. Yeah, they are. But Underlord is the one who's able to constantly shove the lane out and jungle up as well at the same time. Where Wraith King, you know, if he wants to go jungle, his tower is going to take a lot of damage. But Wraith King wants to maximize his farm right now. How do you stop this, Gary? Coach yeah, like, Gary, do you, do what you, is the solution? I mean, you just ignore top, right? You TP like three or four heroes bottom lane, you push into the Bristleback's <laughs> lane. Just ignore the, the Underlord. Back? Are, are you sure you want to yeah. push into the Bristleback? I'd rather push into the Bristleback than into the Underlord Tusk. <laughs> nah, you know what you do? You what don't do go you do bottom, you go mid. Ooh. You go mid. Straight Gary. down mid? See, 
Exactly. You go mid, you bring your, you, you, you like, um, far, farm the Wraith King, you just bring everybody middle. You just go after this Pokemon. You X mark him, you bolt him, you collapse on the tower. You got a Jakiro with the Liquid Fire you can utilize. Oh, he's got two levels in Ice Path, though. He's mm. probably, that's a setup for after the X mark, right? But uh, if they're pushing top, you should try to go middle on the side of crewmates here. And that will, like, create a really awkward situation for. Hakori, they're going to be like, okay, do we commit three heroes top or do we TP some guys mid? Most of the time, they're going to TP guys mid and then you go and defend top. Or you have the option to TP tide mid, like the last one there with Ravage, if they do commit to mm -hmm. a team fight. Like, surprise, the watermelon's yeah, here. Sure. Yeah, that's definitely possible as well. But I, I, I do expect Skyrath and Jakiro to like completely play around the melee. We got a phase boots Kunkka, he can always phase in, X mark uh, the Pugna, so. I don't think Skyrat has any business playing into this Bristleback who has 21 charges and a Vanguard. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, 1300 HP. Yeah, we're not touching that Bristle. When there's like an immovable wall in one of the lanes, don't play into it. There's always two other lanes you can choose from to try but and do something. Sometimes you just want to role play as a crash test dummy. Just charge into mm -hmm. that wall. See, this is how I know you're not a fan of chess, Gary. I'm a brute force person. <laughs> <laughs> no finesse, no nuance. Just go. <laughs> Raw power. Oh. Now Tidehunter disconnects. Oh dear. <laughs> Having a few problems there, the old crewmates. So Gary, why don't you tell us... What, um, what, why you like Dota 2? What's your favorite part of Dota 2? Why did you start playing it? Why did I start playing it? Or what did you enjoy about it that, that made you continue playing Dota 2? Instead of being like, oh, this game's ass, and then just going to some other game. It's like, we were having a discussion about this the other day. Um, Trent, Trent was saying that he likes games where he starts from zero and you know you build things up and you start from zero again, but you're able to do different things every time. And I, mm -hmm. I, I kind of agree with him. That, that's one of the hooks of Dota 2, right? Is that you have so many permutations of different heroes, different drafts, items, things you can do yeah. on the map. What, you know, there's so many parameters you can think about and change you know, to, uh, to kind of win the game at your will and with teammates as well. Because I, mm -hmm. I played CS, I played StarCraft a lot, and I love the team aspect of CS and I love the kind of delicateness of, of StarCraft and you're controlling units and things like that. Put, the, put them both together yeah. in, in Dota and it was... Uh, a match made in heaven but i don't know That's why i could cool. I, I don't know it's like stockholm syndrome you, you you get kidnapped by the game and then you fall in love with it a bit <laughs> suddenly becomes a uh, more of an addiction than a hobby yeah I, I think a lot of people can probably relate to you on that the whole thing of starting all over again is pretty interesting too i think a lot of the top players especially professionals like um at some point they were probably the best in what they did right in dota mm. 2 um, and they're probably thinking the way you are. And there reaches a point where, you know, you're so good that you're trying to get your game to the next level and you start thinking, what is the next level? And that's when, like, you start thinking more about, like, the macro stuff about the game. Right? Because, like, well, before the macro stuff about the game, you're trying to improve yourself to a point where you're, like, every game you're trying to maximize, like, you, how you said, like, being able to win the game on your own, essentially. Like basically thinking about mechanics and key presses and you know your exactly. individual movements and things like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why we see like a lot of young players. You know, they think about being flashy and doing all this cool stuff and whatever. Outplaying. And then you see as the players mature and they get older, they do less of those things and they do more of like map movements and the correct things that enable like the whole team to be able to win. For example, like Arteezy, you know, he's one of those players who I think has developed a lot in that way. So you're going to change compare from... Arteezy to like five years ago and now he's like very, very different player. You change from like micro outplays where you're kind of fog of warring someone to macro outplays where, you know, you're in a, a place on the map where they don't expect it, getting that little bit of extra farm or that little bit of extra information. Hey, what, 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 exactly. when, did, when did you start playing Dota? I mean, you, you started in the Dota 1 days, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, Way back when? I must have been 14 years old, I think. I'm 28 now, so <laughs> it's been a it's long been time. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 14 or 15, something like that. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, well, did you play online or was it like in-house leagues? Land oh, cafes yeah, I played or? online. 
I played online. I played online mm-hmm. completely. Uh, I remember skipping school, you know, telling telling my mother that, uh, um, oh, I have a late start, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then staying home, never going to school, or I'll tell yep. her that, uh, all right, I'm going to school, and then like one hour later, I know my mom has to go for like work or whatever, and then I'll be back home. <laughs> yep, I've done the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Play a lot of Dota back in the day. Oh, hell of a lot of Dota. Yeah, I mean, Dota was like a, it was like a mini game, like a break game for us. We played CS 1.5 and 1.6, and it was like between matches. Mm-hmm. We're like, let's, play, let's have a bit of fun. Let's play some Age of Empires or you know, Dota 2 or Warcraft 3. And then it just hooked everybody. Absolutely everybody. I think it was like 5.84B or something. You know, one of those super old patches on, uh, on Warcraft 3 that we were super into. Damn. Man, how times have changed. All right. Enough of the nostalgia, Gary. We're back. It's hit me so game. hard. <laughs> it's hit me. <laughs> I'm thinking about land cafes and stuff like that. I'm thinking about, oh man, living in Southeast Asia and having a seven-year-old child swearing at me because I've fed down mid lane. <laughs> I had no idea. That's where you played. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, now you got a Pugna blasting mid tower with a chakra magic, so it's like Ooh. double blasting off cooldown. You know, it's not something that. You would have had a long time ago. The combo. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this combo is pretty good though. Like the double blast Pugna. Especially when you're really far ahead, they got so much tower damage. Man, imagine if Pugna had this arcane rune. Kotal's gonna try and guard it for him. Realizes, nah, Pugna's not coming down here. He's shoving top lane. Now, TP Kunker top. Wraith King with a Jakiro nice. looking to defend. Skeletons they're chasing the Tusk and the Underlord back. Yeah, Oops. very good discipline. And look at that, Pugna instantly TP's mid. He's like, okay, Kunka TP top, I'm gonna TP middle. What's the point of staying up there and fighting into them? They can't defend against my blast, and mid tower is more important. Like, the way Hakori play is so good. They're gonna try kill Jakiro. Try, goodness. try kill Jakiro. Oh, wow. That was so quick. And with a catapult yeah, wave, they're on that tier one easily. Blind. Oh, shards on Kunka. Magic resist reduction too. Do they catch him? He's gonna self boat to try and nah, save himself. that's a boat. There's no way. There's no point. That that like, listen. I'm telling you, Hakori is an efficient team. You know, they know their they're not gonna waste their time chasing this Kunka, who will take them like an hour to slay. You know, they're looking at the objectives. They're looking at what, how to maximize their movements. Hey, like you, you're talking about macro movements and near on that Pugna, the movements in the last literal 30 seconds have been superb. Amazing. Haven't they? Amazing. Like, watching this guy play, I'm like, yo, this guy, he knows his Dota. Because he goes top lane to push, Kunker TPs, you call that out, he moves, TPs mid. Kunker moves to mid, waste boat, Pugna straight back up to top lane. And they've got two wards yep. still around the mid lane, so they've got a pretty good position to platform into that mid lane again if they want to. Or they've got the opportunity to go back and take all those juicy stacks, which I, I, I guess Lumiere's Bristleback wants. He's got Vanguard Hood heading into Halberd now. Bristle's gonna be an absolute monster. But it's nice to see that they're not... You know, so many teams will be thinking, hey, we've got stacks, let's go take them. But they are utilizing what they have right now, and the stacks are there as, you know, a fallback plan. If they have to fall back, or if you know, they, they get a couple of objectives, or a, a wipe on the enemy team, they've got options. It's Tidehunter, loses half his HP. Pugno with that life drain and Bristleback chasing in onto Jakiro, but the shards slightly misplaced. Don't get the trap on him. And while this is all happening, Wraith King is having to face an Underlord in that top lane as you try and start a fight bottom. Xing boating onto this Lumiere Bristleback. Yeah, you've done literally no damage to him. Still no damage. <laughs> Torrent, oh, Acropire. No, 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 no that's ball. still no, no damage. No, you've not this touched him. Really no, bad. analog. This is this is atrocious. You've walked into this one. Lumiere is destroying you. You can't handle the bristleback. He's walking into you all. He's killing you. A double kill for Nier. That is not how you start a fight around that bottom tier one. Bristleback is not a hero that you want to contend with right now. You cannot just bolt like that and expect to stick around and take the fight. They're just going to run at you five seconds after the bolt goes off when the... Rum is trying to run out and you got to make your own pressure and like crewmates just got to be middle when they do these things bottom with the bristle and the pona you It's so hard. 
Now they've lost all three tier one towers, and this is looking like game one all over again. I know they're not up like 7,000 gold right now. It's only 3k, but it's a huge map problem. Raid King, though, he's gonna get to Radiance pretty soon. Yeah, that's a, that's a good shout. Was he a thousand gold away from it? Yep. Yeah, they get that tier one bot. Underlord was pushing tier one mid, and Bristlebank just immediately TP's top, pushes out that lane, and again, you know, just bringing up, he's got that fallback plan of the Ancients and the Large Camp stacked. So once mm -hmm. they are done with this top lane, he can, you know, back farm through all the camps, back towards his triangle, and have a, 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 a tremendous amount of gold income. Probably put him close to 10k. Telling you, this Kunkka really doesn't have any potential against Bristleback. You just saw in the last fight. Like, dude, that's supposed to be Kunkka's timings, right? <laughs> Where he's mm -hmm. so strong early with the bow and the X mark, and Bristol just got tickled. And they're diving under that top tier, too. Shakira is there trying to defend, but he's all on his lonesome. Back to the back to the Kunkka, I think the, the panel were talking about uh, picking a spirit vessel carrier as that last hero for crewmates. Uh -huh. Do you think that's one of the considerations? Because Kunkka is buying one. Was it a. Uh, a decision where they needed a spirit vessel carrier and Kunker was the best option for them. Well, you could buy a spirit vessel on Viper. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question I was asking. Tower. That's the answer I wanted. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, you can just buy a spirit. If that's really needed, I think all they needed was the Nether Toxin to be able to kill this Bristleback throughout the whole game. Like, Nether Toxin makes Bristleback have to buy a BKB, pretty much, no matter what. Right now, Bristleback doesn't care about no BKB. You can just buy this Halberd into like Abyssal Blade, and he's just gonna annihilate them. Oh my God! Look at these stacks for Bristol. I've been, I've been telling you, man. <laughs> the Jesus. past five minutes is like they've got so many stacks here. Radiant, <laughs> oh, massive so option good. for for Lumiere. And it, it really is gonna put him close to 10k net worth. He's got Hood Vanguard. Halberd is well on its way towards his backpack. Yeah. They're gonna need a pretty good fight with this Wraith King, man. As soon as they get the Radiance, like instantly, they're gonna have to smoke up and take an engagement with this Ravage. This, this is their time. They're like, guys, the smoke. Wraith King's like, give me a moment. Give me a moment. <laughs> Sec. Please. It's on the way. Oh, there they've got a Hood, Atos, Underlord. Tusk is the one that's gonna scout oh. out. He's silenced and in the ice, uh, ice path there, but a great bit of malice comes in. The boat is going to land onto that dead Tusk's head, but in comes the Illuminate, bursting through the Skyrath Mage. Underlord is retreating because the Ravage comes. The tentacles land onto the Bristle and the Pugna. They're focusing into Nier, but the Blinding Light pushes them back. Shadow Amulet, what do you got? Now? You've got a Yule Scepter on Nier. He self-cyclones as the Torrent comes, popping the Reincarnation. FCR loses his first life, but Bristleback still standing strong. At about half HP, he's destroying them all, and Lumiere, untouchable on this Bristle back the one choice to fight and crewmates arcane. they floundered the arcane rune bristle bank just pumping out quill spray after quill spray and the spirit vessel charge up on the kunker sure it makes things look a little bit nasty for the bristle back but he is perfectly fine <laughs> dude the one time you know when they were they get they hit their timing they run into a bristle back with an arcane rune mm. oh man <laughs> arcane it wasn't even magic. a pugna it wasn't even a Pugna bottling his Arcane, it was a Bristleback, that was way worse. Just spamming the Quills, so easy in the team fights. And you can see the Raid King, like even though he's got this Radiance, he did a lot of damage, but the Bristleback just doesn't care, man. He's got that Hood, he's got the Halberd, Vanguard, he's so tanky. Has this consistent damage against the Raid King too. Oh, Tusk, they've got the Pit of Malice on the Skyrath Mage. A boat coming in, but Sky is already dead. They'll try and trade for El Misho, but the Tide bring it enough D flashes damage over. Time will be just the damage they needed. Mm -hmm. Who are they calling in here? Cottles come across, calls in the Pugna. So they'll try and converge on that tier two. Or may maybe even catch the Kunker. Wise decision to go all the way to high ground. This game is a really good testament as to why Keeper of the Light is first pick or first ban hero like it's just doing so much in this game right one bottom lane it's giving so much mana to your mid your carry they're taking towers he can tp people around the map he's so hard to kill only has one death super fast buys amazing items like glimmer and four staff or agonims 
And it's not just like a one-trick pony, right? Throughout the patches, we've had Cottle Ember Spirit, Cottle DK, Cottle Terror Blade. You know, all these. Yeah, it doesn't even combos. matter what hero, right? Yeah, it's just so good. I'll get a kill on Tusk. Blow him up. Four heroes there from the crewmates. Yeah, do take him out. Radiance middle tower is under attack. It, it, like honestly, I don't even think he needs a combo. You, you can combo off every single hero in Dota, right? Just giving, for example, Underlord two Firestorms in a fight. Mm. That's already great as well. It's just like how he can win lanes for you with this Solar Bind Illuminate and how you can constantly provide resources. You can TP heroes back to base, heal up, port back into the fight. He just has too many possibilities. I fully expect this hero to have like some kind of a nerf next patch. Yeah, and then... I feel like one of his biggest strengths is the deep push, you know, the wave clear that he's got as well. Yeah, exactly. S like sitting behind, if you're a safe lane support, just sit behind your bot tier one as Radiant, keep shoving that mm -hmm. wave out. It's just so weird that uh, we don't see as much or as many bans on this hero in South America, where other regions respect this hero so heavily. Jakiro? Uh, what are you up to, buddy? You've, um, well, you've walked into them there a little bit. He kills the wave, though. He stops the push on the tier two. <laughs> what, was that worth Delay his life? It. Um, maybe. I think it is, because they're going to get a little bit more space to push bottom up. They got to get this Kunkka to the BKB. You're just a position five, Jakiro. You got the whole wave, too. It's like one of those moves where you're, you know, kind of wondering, wait, what, what are you doing? Are you, are you doing a bit of a feed? And then you think about it, and yeah, his, his life is actually worth stopping that wave reaching the tier two in the mid lane. I mean, how much you gold did he give? Like somehow. 200 gold and like, you know, a smidgen of experience goes to the Radiant, whereas your Kunkka gets an extra two waves. Your Wraith King gets, what, two or three jungle camps. And, and information as to where they are. Exactly. And Bristleback, he has found himself in that dire triangle. Eternal Shroud now ready. 20% hmm, okay. spell lifesteal. That's a really good item. Also gives you back some uh, mana. That, that always surprises me, you know? Like, I actually didn't know that Shroud gave you back mana until, like, one or two weeks into the patch. Yeah, I the think active I surprises over you. That. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it does what? Turns magical yeah, damage into mana? When I, I remember I was streaming and someone said, said, like, oh, you know, but it gives you mana. I'm like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Are you crazy? Why the hell does Shroud give you mana? And then uh, I read the spell and then I'm the one who looked like an ass. <laughs> After that, <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, I guess it gives you mana. Should have read the fine so print. Weird. Mm -hmm. Kept yeah, wondering, we'll like, why why are people buying Shroud on Leshrac? Like, what? Yeah, it's like gives a second, a little like, bit of Yules into Shroud. It, yeah, I mean, this this spell um, spell damage Bristleback. It was, it's always been a thing with that level 25 talent as well. You know, level 20 and 25 talents with the quill damage and the spell life steal. Very often, you'd be aiming towards, you know, Octarine Core later on in the game. But I guess this Eternal yeah. Shroud is uh, much more of an early mid-game focused item for you. So much nicer with a hood, and you you want to be a tanky boy. Makes a you lot do. of sense. I mean, the counter to Bristol isn't really like just a vessel. I think the harder counter to Bristol is just break. Mm. You know, he's just not tanky if he doesn't have this passive. So it's the most important thing to get rid of. And we, we don't I'm have gonna that. Keep going back to it. Wait, what's that? We don't have that many breaks in the game, do we? Like Nyx no, Assassin, but there's one Silver really Edge. easy one. Who, who, Viper. Who, who, Hello. Vi Vi who's Viper? What? Never heard of that hero. Before. What? Yeah, <laughs> the hero that crewmates completely ignored when they're playing against Underlord and Bristol. And le legit Pugna. Like it's just so good. I mean, the thing is, maybe the mid player. Um, I think it was Boy who said like, he doesn't play Viper. But come on, who doesn't play Viper, though? Everyone plays Viper. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Demon's one I always forget. Yeah, Doom, Shadow Demon, Viper, Nyx, Silver Edge. There's only f yeah, four heroes and one item. I, I was actually thinking, Gary, that the stock in Doom was going to go up in this patch, but it really didn't. Everyone just ignores him. And mainly because uh, Satanic doesn't have status assist anymore. I thought that Doom was going to be a really good ability. Because last patch, Doom was good. And so you'd think he'd be better now. Mid lane. Exactly. 
And it's not like he got nerfed or anything. I guess they did change his Infernal Blade with Zags, but not every game did people buy mm. Aghanims for the Infernal Blade. Oh, Skyrath. Gonna TP out of that mid lane or not. Yule's cancels. And Pugna's gonna find himself a nice little sky kill here with the help of the Rod of Atos. As the Tusk still chasing Tidehunter. Hijack has the ability to TP, but Snowball and the Walrus Punch. They're both gonna be coming here to cancel it out. Decrap and Life Drain from Nia. And this Tidehunter, well, he's made a bit of space for his Wraith King and his Kunker, and he's proving very difficult to kill. Taking a while until the Bristle arrives at long last. Tank down that big tanky watermelon. Buy a watermelon. Yeah, and they've still got what three and a half minutes on Aegis. Plenty of time to run down that bottom lane, shove in with mid thanks to this Cottle. Plant yourself in that dire triangle. And oh, it's so good, man. You've got a high ground board already. Play bottom too. Yeah, like spit pushing and running at the other side, Bristleback could instantly be there. Like this information, Bristol's oh. bottom doesn't even mean shit. They see the Kunker. They've caught him up. Oh, it just dies before the board even comes out. Annihilated. And now Skyrath Mage. Oh, okay. Slows him down with a concussive shot. So Tusk can't close the gap. But now they're on that tier two mid. This is some crazy combo. The Coddle and the Pugna. Like it was it's already good because of the Nether Blast, but now with the solar bind. Reducing the uh, magic resist even further. And it slows for your Pugna's life drain. <laughs> oh, it's actually so, so good. Yeah, super nasty. You know what else is one of my favorite combos? Um, I ran quite a bit when I was playing. Um, Kato plus Tiny. Oh, yeah. So you, you toss combo and then you mana him again, and they don't expect the secondary jump that comes out much quicker because your opponent is like analyzing you know how long they have before the tiny has it can jump in again right yeah and i assume with the solar bite it's even better now just to increase that jump damage amps up all of burst that burst damage yeah amps up all that burst combo i mean what, what is it it's like it's six seconds faster than normal so instead of i mean tiny's cooldown is like what 12 14 seconds or something i think 14 seconds yeah, yeah. so so it's half it's like, uh in half the duration, you can already go back into the fight combo That's again. insane. Because Tiny is an in and out hero, so... Well, it gets in and out in pretty quick. And Hokori here. The tower, just dead like that. Yeah. <laughs> in on the barracks. Right now. Skara shoving I mean, top. It's going to be backdoor protection in a second here. Just going to get out. Is there a Kunkka for the X mark? No, he's miles away. No Kunkka. Yeah, they go top. They got range racks. Cut the waves. Wraith King continues farming. And they all TP back up towards top. Kunk in the mid lane. He's He's been pinged out here. He's X marking and clearing out that mid wave. Snowball is going to track back the boat. It will be oh launched boy. out. But he he's inside the shards and that pit of malice. Dead. And now he can't escape. He doesn't have BKB. He can't TP. And he's been solar bound, but oh, he's what? been pushed onto the high ground. The blinding light giving uh, this Kunker a little bit of an escape started. mechanism, but the snowball coming now. El Misho saves the day. Comes back in with that stun to cancel a TP barely. Well, mid, they get the Yules on the Jakiro. Pugna's gone in. Yeah, life drains there, and there's no ice path to save him. Poor, poor Jakiro down and gives a killing spree to Nier's Pugna. And we're going round I think two. He had a window where he could have TP'd out after the Atos pit. You know, Tusk also used this punch. You could just TP it out right there, but it took a little too long. And I'll finish off what they started. I even swinging into. have no intentions of fighting right now until the Kunkas alive. Getting into bottom lane as well. And Vitaly's got a full pipe. Mech is back in base. He's got, he's got a full item over in his stash that he's not brought out just yet. But yeah, crewmates, no. Uh, no real thoughts of trying to defend this heavily. They're, they're smoked up. Considering it here with Blink Ravage at the ready. Tidehunter's going on a wraparound mission. Looking to backstab. Hunt the Pugna. Hunt the Cottle. And Hijack in a good position. 
As the Aegis, it's expired. They jump in with a chain stuns and a Mystic Flare. They find good, here. Good catch. Great blow up on the Pugna now. As the Bristle back, he's still trying to backstab the Jakiro. The Underlaw being focused. X mark. Back into what? There's no torrent, no boat. So the Dark Rift from Vitali and the Snowball get themselves out of here. Where's the Bristleback? Come here, buddy. Bristleback, You're all Bristleback still in the base. <laughs> he's going one versus four. Let's see what Lumiere can do. He's healing up with the Eternal Shroud. He's got Halberd and one. He's on 1,000 HP. He's cool spraying like a madman, but he's still going to die here, surely. In this situation, there's no way Bristleback escapes with his life. <laughs> he got ditched. Race King with some nice, uh, nice music there. Getting the kill. That was a very good initiation there with the uh, Tide Hunter and the Race King together blinking in, going for the Pugna. Pugna kind of exposed himself way too much in that last fight. He just needed to let the Bristleback hit the tower. I mean, sorry, hit their axis and sat back really far back. Hey, crewmates knew when that Aegis was expiring for sure. They were they were prepped for it. All right, Pugna's Aegis expired. A second and a half later, he's being jumped. They knew what they were doing. A Yule Scepter on his Kunkka, though, trying to stop the X. They've also got the Shards and the Pit. Finding him as he X himself back into it. He throws the boat. Tides come in to try and save him with a with a jump and an anchor smash, but got Analog out of there. Now what? Near. Gonna get caught up. Lotus Orb does dump a stun back, but he's been blown up. The Pugna's gone, and this Tusk is too deep. The crewmates, they're fighting back. A 9k yep. deficit, but they're finding some real good kills as they group up together. So good. I mean, Hokori is really uh, playing sloppy here. They got the Bristleback coming back alive in 20 seconds. They go middle. They try to do something with some Yules, random Yules play that cannot really amount to anything. And giving away two more kills. I mean, crewmates, they should keep going right now. They got to look for more kills while these two guys are dead. Yeah, they've got Kunka BKB. They've got this BKB blink on the Wraith King. He's got a double damage rune bottled. Let's go more. They're gonna have the Ravage up too on the Tide Hunter. Do they have to come and maintain their lanes though? Like top's pushed by Cottle, bottom is pushed by Underlord. Mm, I think it's better if you just try to play up first and see if you can get a kill. And then once all five heroes are alive, then you go back. Like, what's happening right now? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Maybe, yeah, maybe you see if Hakori overextend a little bit. But Frozen yeah, Sigil. They got a high ground ward though. Okay. The Aghanim Shard on Tusk. Pit of Malice towards Jakiro, Tide coming in towards the Tusk, the Blink Ravage is onto the three cores, the and they, they do find, the, find Pugna. the Pugna, he's got Yule's Lotus Orb, can he get himself out of here, self Yule's, have they got more saves for the Glimmer Cape, he dodges the boat as well, and he's out of there with a Will-O-Wisp help, Chakra matched up, and the Pit of Malice traps in the Wraith King, the BKB, Analog Kunker, he's chasing the X-Mark into X-Mark back, but he's BKB'd and the Tide, he makes the jump, Pugna's still alive though, self decrap into the Gush and he's gone, but the Wraith King's focused, Bristleback and the Underlord on top of FCR and the Quill Sprays. We're up to three, four stacks now. The Wraith King can't run away. A wicked sick Underlord also going to move in towards Tidehunter now. Four heroes all around him and a double for Vitaly. Was that a four for the price of one? It was. Oh, it really was. Oh, they got the them. rift. They rift into bottom lane. Easy barracks. Rod of Atos on the Kunker. Oh, I thought they could maybe catch him there. A little bit too far away. But now they've got all three lanes pushing in. They can they can swing top. They're forced to buy back out of Tide with no Ravage. 80 second cooldown. Now oh, this is them pushing without their Bugna. Ice Path in. Lumiere. He's running forward. Vitali is trapped inside of it. But he's got himself Greaves and Pipe. Killing off Mr. Slug. Not so easy. And you're still down to Wraith King. Crewmates, 10 seconds to go. Can you hold on to this last lane of barracks? There's a great pit of malice with the Will-O-Wisp. Dragging them all back into it. But the focus last here bags. from Hakori is just that building. Hit the barracks. A TP from the Wraith King. A jump from Hijack. Still no Ravage. Trying to buy time for FCR to get in there and find some kills. D-Flash is already down though. And FCR, well, he's, he's moved to fight the Bristleback. <laughs> I don't think that's oh, a target no. you can go on, though. <laughs> Bristle is running at your Skyrath Mage. A double kill for Lumiere, that's and he's going to go fountain diving at this point. Chase the flash back. It looks like this is all over. 27 to 13. They are going to be hiding in their fountain. Analog caught up inside the Pit of Malice with a Jakira of D-Flash, giving a triple kill to Hakori's Lumiere Bristle. Where's the Wraith King? What's he up to? FCR in the shards. Rod of Atos there, and Blinding Light pushed back. 
into Vitaly's waiting arms. Slice him down with a good little snowball to stun him. And they've got this game in the bag. GG is called. And Hokori with a 2-0 victory. A better performance from the crewmates this time around though, eh, Theban? Yeah, better. But they got they had limitations according to their heroes, I think. Um, Jakiro, you know, it didn't work out because you really have to have a very specific lineup around it this game. And uh, again, I'm going to go back to the whole point of Kunkka versus Viper. I think that was probably their clutch pick there to try and make this lineup work. Um, Hikori, though, they're just playing on a whole nother level, man. Uh, like in this Division 2, the way they just move around the map, how they play, how they try to out 